All right, I think we should get started. Thank you so much uh, for coming. Uh, my name is John de Guzman. I am the general manager of our Marketplace product, which is our uh, syndicated content uh, product. Um, just some housekeeping notes up front. Full transparency, I'm having some tech issues and I can't see my mouse. I don't think that'll be a problem right now, uh, but we are gonna spend some time on some websites, so hopefully um, it will be more comedic than embarrassing. Um, we are gonna do a Q&A at the end. You'll see the option um, in the software here to submit questions. We have some questions that we received in advance. Um, you can also submit questions on Twitter. My coworker, Ali, will be monitoring all these channels. Uh, we're suggesting the, the hashtag LC webinar that you see on the uh, front page there. Um, and I wanna save enough time for that. Um, so again, I'm, uh, oh, one more thing is we've created a great resource page um, that includes a lot of information, one sheets around how our customers are using licensed content, um, and also links to our blog posts about licensed content um, from our blog, insights.newscred.com. Um, so we'll email you the resource page after this meeting so you have access to it. Um, the focus of this presentation is to really highlight some of the great work that our customers are doing with licensed content. Um, so we're gonna spend a, quite a chunk of time on the web, looking at their sites, uh, crawling around and um, seeing really good work. Um, great, so let's get started. Here's the agenda. Um, we're gonna start with literally defining what is licensed content. That's always a good place to start anything. Um, and we'll talk about the value it brings um, if, as you're looking to be a more efficient marketing team. And then this is the bulk of it. We're gonna go onto our customers' websites and take a look at how they're using it um, and the different strategies that they, they use it for. So um, definitely excited for that. We're gonna do a quick product demo. Um, and then I have some thoughts about performance and testing, and then we'll get to the Q&A. Um, so again, you can submit your questions here in the, in the Zoom software, and you can also um, submit them on Twitter. Excellent, okay, let's get started. So <clears throat> what is licensed content? Um, if you haven't spoken to NewsCred before, um, you've probably not heard about licensed content. We're the only marketing platform that has um, this incredible library of content uh, from our publishers. Um, so if you haven't spoken to us before, this is probably all new to you. I'll start with some general intro. Uh, if you have spoken to us, then welcome back. And I hope that you get inspired by some of the ways that our customers are using licensed content. So a quick definition. Uh, licensed content is rights cleared articles and images from our providers like Forbes, Bloomberg, Fast Company, Reuters, Mayo Clinic, Refinery29, and Getty Images into your marketing messaging. Um, obviously, these publications are super authoritative. They offer great insight and reporting, and we're going to talk about how you can bring that into your strategy. Just a couple of notes on the size of our library and what kind of content we have, what kind of publishers we have. So we have about 3,400 publications. So for every Reuters that you recognize, there's tens of smaller ones you don't recognize that have niche coverage. Um, they uh, give us content in nine different languages and we also have nine image providers. In our back end, we have about 60 million articles and we add 1.6 million more every month. So why? why? Why use licensed content? Let's talk about the state of things right now and how licensed content can help. Performance matters now more than ever before. One of my favorite things about this page is that <laughs> this page is always relevant. We could put this up in a week and be like, oh yeah, last week performance kind of mattered. Now it really Matter. So we're always trying to find ways to do better, to do more with what we have. This is data from BuzzSumo report last year. They sampled 100 million posts in 2017. These are brand posts. And only 50% of all the content gained four shares or more across main social networks. And that's half of what it was in 2015. So engagement on brand content is going down on average. And um, I gotta say that there are probably more than four people in a marketing organization. So 
it's not even inspiring the marketing team to share it. Um, and meanwhile, a lot of work and time and energy is going into creating this content that isn't necessarily getting the traction one would want. 5% um, of branded content accounts for 90% of the engagement. So all of that content that's created and researched and paid for, um, about one in 20 pieces actually gets a lot of traction and has an impact. So when we talk about being operationally efficient, um, we're looking to solve that problem. How can we help you uh, be more um, strategic and more efficient with your resources and your time to make sure that you're putting out content that will resonate? So operational efficiency is not about doing more with less. That's basically just marketing, right? Operational efficiency is about doing less and producing the same outputs or doing the same amount of work and producing more. Licensed content can help. Here's some, uh, some stats, some data from, from our network. So the average workflow for publishing licensed content takes about one fifth the time of creating original content. That's significantly less. Also the price of licensed content is less than original content. So when you put those together, we have a great case study from one of our customers, Cap Gemini. They had a really um, a robust content marketing hub, putting out a lot of great content. And they used licensed content to save over half a million dollars in three years uh, to operate their content marketing hub. Now this was a very ambitious publishing schedule, so it was a big operation. Um, but there are tangibles here in using licensed content. So let's take a look. Uh, as, as we look at our customers' um, examples, as I, as I drive you through, um, I want you to think about the fact that licensed content is easy to use, right? It doesn't take long to get up on your site. It's cheaper to use. Um, so it's almost, I like to think of it as like a Swiss army knife that you can apply to whatever your strategy is. Granted, this is an incredibly, <laughs> scary Swiss army knife. This is an actual Swiss army knife that was created for a while. I think it was an anniversary uh, Swiss army knife. So I'm gonna replace that with something that's much more manageable and less threatening. Um, but let's jump in now to how our customers use it. I'm gonna jump over to my browser and hopefully my, um, my pointer comes back. Ah, there it is, fantastic. Okay, so this is gonna be the bulk of the presentation. I wanna take some time and really explore how our, contents are, uh, how our customers are using the content and how it ties to their greater strategy. Um, hopefully this is familiar to some of you. Some of you. This is Rula Law's um, uh, content hub. They are basically a, a clothes, they sell clothes e-commerce and um, what they do with their blog is they bring a lot of really interesting content into the blog so that it has uh, fresh articles and there's always something new to see here. Um, You'll notice that all of our customers have their content hubs away from their e-commerce site. Um, so it's really about just educating and inspiring um, people who are coming to the hub. Like most of our customers, they separate the content based on the content pillars that they're focusing on. So they, they focus on fashion, beauty, living, men. Um, and you'll see it's really great content. Um, as we scroll through, it's like beautiful visuals, I did not make it to Coachella this year, but I, I feel like I could be there if I just clicked on that. Um, let's take a look, let's click in. So this is interesting, Diane Keaton finally ID'd her Instagram famous jeans. This is an important article. This was written by, in style originally, by Isabel Jones, and it's being used by Rula La on their hub. The majority of the content that you will see on their hub is, um, is through our marketplace. Um, we can look at another example here. This is an article from Pure Wow um, that is on Rue's site. So Rue Lala is using licensed content to scale this operation and to be able to have enough content to not just bring on, on, onto their hub, but their true strategy, the reason that they have this hub is not necessarily to have a great, beautiful website. Their end goal is to have a robust, newsletter program 
and I don't know how many of you subscribe to it, but they send out very regular newsletters and they have certain personas that they're targeting with their newsletter. So when their editors are coming into our platform to curate content, the end goal is not this hub. The end goal is to package a newsletter that they can deliver at the cadence that they're expecting to deliver. And as you all know, repeat um, uh, visitors uh, from something like your newsletter actually uh, spend more time on the site, are more engaged. So their ultimate goal is to have a very strong newsletter program, which they do have. And now we can think about how Swiss Army Knife style, they apply licensed content to that strategy. And for them, it's mainly about having, first of all, incredible content, great engaging content with good photos, but also about helping them scale up and, um, and be able to program those newsletters without having to create all the content themselves. Um, so I'm gonna scroll through and just see. So you'll see that they have a call to action here to sign up to the newsletter. It's really the focus of how they're communicating with their, with their customers and their, um, and their prospects. So that's real a lot. Let's jump over to another customer. This is GuideSpark. GuideSpark is about 10 years old. Um, it's an HR company. So it's a B2B company. They, um, they have a really cool hub here. So this is their hub. It's called Engage. Um, it uh, sits on their GuideSpark domain, engage.guidespark.com. And uh, they use their content as well in newsletters. They also use the content on social, which is something um, almost all of our customers do. Um, but when we think about that Swiss Army knife and how are they actually using it, how are they using licensed content in their strategy? So they have their um, content pillars the same way that Rula Law did, right? They're breaking things out that way and sort of planning their programming that way. But when we click in to one of these, employee communication, You'll see that basically all of the articles here are GuideSpark articles. This is um, a content pillar that they fully want to own the communication on. They want to dedicate their original content resources and research to owning this part of the conversation on their hub. And when I talk about the value of licensed content, it's not an either or with original. Um, we have strong recommendations on what you should be doing with original content as well. It's about finding the balance and figuring out which tools in that Swiss Army knife will actually work for you and help you given what your goals are. So GuideSpark knows that they want to dominate the messaging on this space, but if we go over to something like Total Rewards, there is original content in here, but you'll see they're also leveraging the great coverage from Employee Benefit News, which is one of our publishers, Kaiser Health News. Um, let's see who else. They have a New York Times article on here. So for this particular content pillar, they're saying, yes, we want to have some original content in there, but we want to um, display thought leadership and show that we're on top of what's happening in our industry. And we're going to rely on this great reporting that's already coming to them through our platform. To, um, to populate the space. That's also the same for their talent and culture. Again, they, they're highlighting their messaging here, but as we scroll through, you'll see there's a Fast Company article. There, uh, there's that Fast Company article. There's a Fortune article, another Employee Benefit News. They have an Ad Week article as well. I'm gonna load more just to see another fortune. So really they're bringing a diversity of voices and opinions onto their hub. And why this is uh, so outstanding to me, why I, why I picked this one to highlight their good work, is, there's, is how they're, they're not treating each one of these content pillars the same and they have a clear strategy of what they wanna do with them. And then it's just a question of figuring out how licensed content can help them. Yeah, instead of staffing up, to create all of this original content. They can lean on Fortune and New York Times. I gotta tell you, it's a, it's a great set of people to lean on. <laughs> the New York Times, Fortune, Employee Benefit News. We really do have some outstanding content in our library. As I said, GuideSpark brings this content to their newsletter and they also bring it to social. 
There's another channel that I want to focus on next, which is from our customer, First Republic Bank. Um, they have their hub here, Articles and Insights. Um, it's another, I'd say, beautiful hub. A lot of good blend of content here, original and licensed. Um, what I find um, smart about what they're doing is the content that they're picking to syndicate, that they're picking to rely on a publisher for. <clears throat> this article is from Motley Fool. Um, you see we maintain the byline and the attribution for the publisher. Um, we also have a legal paragraph at the bottom, let me show you. It sort of explains how this content got on this site. Uh, this article was written by, this is the byline from Motley Fool and was legal licensed through NewsCred's publisher network. Um, <clears throat> Why, is this, why does this stand out to me? Um, to me, this is something that a brand would instinctively want to own the conversation on. This is probably a big SEO opportunity for any brand. At, right before doing taxes, you bet people are searching for tax deductions, specifically 2019 tax deductions. And yet First Republic said, we don't want to spend time and resources fighting for that. So we're just going to lean on Motley Fool. That's a pretty mature way to think about it. And as you are all struggling with limited resources, these types of moves I, I, I can be really smart. They're still including this in their newsletters. They're still including it on social. And the other channel that they focus on, let me go back to the homepage, where First Republic really shines is that, again, their goal isn't necessarily to have a great hub. It's nice, but really their CMO, and this is where, where they really shine, um, make sure that this content gets to their sales team so that it can help in their conversations, further people along the funnel, down the funnel, and ultimately convert them. So this play for them is, the hub is great, but it's really about measuring the speed that their um, sales team can operate under with this as a guide, uh, as a guise of these are the types of conversations you can reach out about. So they can reach out to a prospect and say, by the way, just want to let you know, we have this great content on our site about 2019 tax deductions. Just want to make sure you see that. And then of course, follow up with a, let me know if you want a demo or if you want to talk further. So they, we call it sales enablement. I'm sure there's other terms out there, but that's another channel. That's another channel that needs content. Your sales team needs to be able to talk about the industry, talk about your point of view on things. So this is a space that maybe First Republic would have tried to own from an SEO standpoint, but in the end they said, let's just get the content and have it lubricate the rest of the business that we're really focusing on, which is making sure we can close more deals. I have another example here of something that they might try to own um, in an SEO way, but this again, they just, realize Motley Fool has great content, so let's just bring in their expertise, have that on our site, and then um, let that loose on, our, on their sales team so that their sales team can be more effective. This is an interesting article that they, they put in here because this isn't necessarily even banking related. This is just about networking. And this is a Forbes article written by um, Michelle there. Um, and this is interesting to me, this, this is another uh, uh, benefit of licensed content, is you can kind of dance around what you think the boundaries of your marketing funnel are, and maybe start presenting information and insight that sits outside of your core business to see if that engages people and, 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 and educates them in some way or inspires them in some way. I'm, I'm surprised to see content like this coming out of a, a bank. And I think it's smart. I think it's really smart. <clears throat> Trying to see if there's anything else to highlight here. The other thing, um, I'll jump back to GuideSpark for a second. Um, GuideSpark, um, obviously, when they have when they're using licensed content, they're they're using um, it to sort of scale their operations. But GuideSpark in particular used licensed content well. They were starting a content marketing program and needed a hub. And they wanted the hub, even when it was launched, to look like it had a lot of, I mean, not to look like, but to have a lot of good content in there. 
And creating and scaling that up with original content would have been very tricky. So they leaned on our marketplace. And when they launched, I think they had about 20 articles per um, content pillar here already on the site. And it looked like it has been around for a long time and actually had great content for you to dive into. So that's another um, big plus to using licensed content is you can scale up and get a hub, a hub running really quickly. Great. This is First Republic. I, I keep waiting to hear like confirmation from people and I, everybody's on mute and uh, this must be what it's like to host a radio program. Uh, just talking to a screen. Um, great. Let's jump over to Twitter. I'm sure you've heard of Twitter. They are <laughs> a social network platform. Um, they uh, work with us um, specifically on their SMB. So they're a small and medium business team um, and they have this awesome hub here. Um, it's called Twitter Business Outlook. Um, Twitter obviously knows Twitter incredibly well. So you'd think like, what could they put into their hub that wouldn't sort of be heavily marketing uh, focused uh, content, right? Like this is what you can do with Twitter. And that's where they lean on licensed content. Um, and they do a good job of bringing different voices in. I'm going to show you some examples in a second. Um, but this, I, I feel like this is actually a really beautiful blog. So I'm just going to scroll through it a little bit. A lot of their content is original content. They have a lot of good stuff to say, and there's a lot of insight in there, um, which makes it even more interesting to see what they actually use licensed content for. So let's take a look. I shall go here first. So um, they widen the conversation with licensed content. Um, they don't just talk about Twitter. And in fact, what you'll see here are tips on <clears throat> um, challenges for mobile product managers and how to handle them. And this, um, like First Republic Bank, sort of widening what the conversation is about, I think is very, very smart and something that's easy to do with licensed content. Um, if you can provide challenges and learnings to a mobile product manager, that might free up their time to be able to talk about distribution or to be able to talk about, um, I'm just scrolling through the article so you can see. Um, we have full articles in our marketplace. Um, this was originally published in Business to Community by Andre Theus, and it now lives here on Twitter site. Um, so one thing that Twitter does also that we have the option to do, one of the things I wanna highlight is that before the licensed content article, you can put an introductory paragraph, an editor's notes or an, an opinion, anything to say um, to, to bring your messaging across through. So it, you can say, um, you know, we found this very interesting, uh, especially if you're trying to uh, regionalize it. Like if you're a UK company and it's a US article about 401ks, you can say, uh, this is a really interesting article about saving up for retirement. Um, in the UK, there are no 401ks, so we encourage you to look at and uh, whatever the equivalent is. So you can put your tone on there. I want to I want to show you how Twitter uses that really well um, right now. So we had we have this big rock piece of content that we created with Twitter. Um, I'm going to scroll through it, but basically, um, Twitter's SMB team was. Um, trying to um, find ways to get more video onto Twitter. So this, um, this page is just gorgeous and it's actual real data coming uh, from Twitter, um, working with our team to create this. I'm gonna keep scrolling through because it is really just fantastic. Making the case for how much video is consumed on Twitter, how effective it is, what results people are seeing and obviously to talk about Twitter a little bit. You won't see any licensed content in here. This is all their original stuff. So how would they bring licensed content into this? Like which tool from the Swiss Army Knife are they gonna bring to help them here? The licensed content Swiss Army Knife. It ends with a learn more uh, button. This is where Twitter uh, shines and this is why I'm super happy to highlights their work. This is a licensed piece that they published, also done by Business to Community, I believe, around the time of the Big Rock campaign. 
This is just a generic, is your company giving video the love it deserves? It's a great article talking about the benefits of using video and email marketing, how it plays on mobile devices. This is not Twitter saying, bring your video to Twitter. This is Twitter saying, hey, look at this um, interesting reporting about how important video is. And then in their introductory paragraph here, where they can put their own messaging, they say video is a central piece of what's happening on Twitter. In fact, video views on Twitter have grown 220 times what they were just 12 months ago. Read on to learn how your brand can start leveraging video content. And when you click on this, it takes you to the big rock. That's such a smart Swiss army knife tool. We have made this incredible um, big rock piece and now we need to basically get some distribution and get people's eyeballs on it. They're coming in to learn about how video can help them and some standard basic information about how well it performs. And they're being led to this incredible content created by Twitter. It's, it's so smart. Um, and of course, Twitter shares this, uh, these licensed uh, pieces, bringing people back to the hub. They share it on social, they have a newsletter, but they also used it as a channel to bring people back to their big rock campaign. Super cool. All right, so we've talked about a few customers. Let's, we have a couple more I'd like to highlight for you. So this is uh, Panasonic. This team in Panasonic, <coughs> excuse me, makes hardware that is designed to take a beating, basically. They create um, laptops, tablets, phones, that can be out on a construction site, that can be out on an oil rig, that can be run over by a truck. And their content hub is fantastic. It has a lot of great content, helpful insight on what it is to work on those environments. Ultimately, with a message being like, you probably need some good hardware while you're out there. The reason um, I'm excited to highlight them is that this is a very niche topic, right? They basically want to talk to somebody in procurement, maybe the CTO, maybe the CFO, um, and they want to have a conversation that's not broad. It's, I mean, it's broad for the industry, but it's not, not everybody's going to be coming in here. Um, and the inclination would be that, well, we got to write all this because it doesn't, that content doesn't live anywhere. Like we'd have to just create this because who knows our industry. It's such a, it's such a niche industry. And what you'll see here on their hub is great licensed content. Well, this first piece is an original piece, but here's an inside look <coughs> at an I IOT. I mean, that's how little I know about this. I thought it was IOT, but an I IOT powered smart factory. This was written by Network World. Here we have an article, the challenges of connected government. So now they're also talking about sort of network uh, concerns that might um, affect people. Uh, working in remote areas or challenging things. Here we have an original piece that focuses on uh, military and you'll see the use of their um, tough books right here. But you'd be surprised at how much content they find that is relevant to a pretty niche operation. There's a business to community article. I'm gonna click through just so we can see what other publishers they use. Another business to community. Okay, this is interesting, this is logistics management. This is a publisher that basically focuses on supply chain and procurement. Um, and this is really, uh, I mean, uh, again, this is not my industry, but I'm interested in lift trucks joining the connected enterprise. Um, and I'm sure this is very useful to the customers that they have and to um, prospects they're talking to. Here's an, another article from Network World. Here's a Forbes article. So they really have a good, and then they have another original piece. They have a good diversity of voices on here. Um, but to me, this is, this, this is a great example to me of niche coverage and, and assuming 
as a marketer that you have to go out and everything has to be your stamp and you have to um, scale up an operation to handle supporting a hub like this. And in this case, they lean on licensed content really, really well. And their hub is great. So they also, as you see here, share it on email and share it on social. Um, it's a good example. Awesome. Let's, um, I'm going to jump back to my presentation because the last one I want to show you uh, is a mobile app, which I don't, uh, can't show you on this. So let's just go through again to remind uh, the customers because I have, well, I have placeholders, so why not? So Rulala, their ultimate goal is to have a thriving newsletter campaign. And so they use licensed content to program that, to scale up, to be able to maintain a really healthy publishing cadence and ultimately bring super qualified people back to their site to be inspired, to be educated, and hopefully to click through to buy something. GuideSpark, the reason I love their implementation is that they're being smart about where they bring licensed content into their hub. They know what they want to focus on and what they want to put their resources against, what they want to own the space in terms of messaging. And then they bring licensed content into the other ones to support it, to help scale it. They also used us to get their site up and running really, really quickly. And they do well sh uh, sharing it also in newsletters and on social. First Republic, um, the reason that they stood out was that they are using this to basically make their sales team more effective. And there's a clear ROI to be measured from that. Um, so the hub is great, but really um, leadership there uh, tracks how well things are going with the sales team and how this content helps them in their discussions. So that's First Republic. We talked about Twitter. Um, one thing I didn't talk about Twitter um, that I wanna bring up now, cause I forgot to, is that they also use a lot of content from Adweek and from AdAge and other advertising publications that brings just sort of more top generic, top of funnel information about marketing. Obviously Twitter's a channel to help express that marketing, but they, they really just want to educate marketers. They even use content from our blog on their website. Um, so we have insights.newscreate.com is our blog. And we talk obviously a lot about marketing and Twitter brings that onto their site. The last one we focused on was Panasonic Mobility, which again is a niche uh, coverage topic you'd expect that we wouldn't be able to help them, but lo and behold, we have content that helps them. The last one I wanna talk about is Blink Fitness. Um, they, basically the goal for Blink Fitness is to bring more value to their members, to bring them more information. So this content that they syndicate through Marketplace doesn't live on a hub. In fact, it's only in their mobile phone. And it's only if you have a login. And the goal was, but they don't really have another reason to stick around. And this is an app, but this I think is the case for everybody. When they finally get someone onto their properties, they want to engage them and keep them there longer. So they're doing this great thing where they bring interesting, relevant information about health and about working out lifestyle, sort of healthy lifestyle to their users to have them spend more time on the app and, um, and bring them more value. It's great to have interesting recipes in here. Um, it's good stuff. So those are <clears throat> the customer examples. I really hope that that was helpful to, uh, to, to justify the term of a Swiss army knife. I mean, it really is about where can we lean on this authoritative, good content um, so that we can free up our resources to focus on what's really important so that my team can have a bigger output. So our, we have a great platform and all this stuff happens in our platform. But as I'm looking at the time, I'm realizing that I don't want to show you our platform. So I'm gonna go through this really quickly. I'm gonna skip the demo because I wanna save enough time for Q and A. So let me just talk about what, um, what came out a couple of weeks ago where Gartner has their Magic Quadrant. This is the second year they're doing a Magic Quadrant for content marketing platforms, which are CMPs. 
Um, you'll see NewsCred is the leader and the visionary. We were also um, sort of top right last year, and we seem to have moved a little farther top and a little farther right this year. Um, so uh, take that as a, a validation that we have a really good CMP. Um, our marketplace is built right into it. This is what it looks like. I'm going to do this in lieu of an actual demo. When you find an article you like a marketplace, you can move right into setting a task due date, picking a workflow, bringing it to the rest of your team that needs eyeballs on it to approve it. <laughs> Whether that's a marketing team, an agency, um, your lawyers, your compliance team, whoever needs to come in, um, you can build a workflow to make sure that everybody has approved it. And then ultimately you can publish it to every channel. We have the ability obviously to publish to your blog. We have a good WordPress integration, um, but we also have integrations um, with Marketo to help with your emails. We have an integration with Sprinkler to help with your social, or you can publish directly to social. So I was going to do a demo here. That's what this is for. Let's just skip it. Um, and I do want to remind that we have really good images as well. Um, in fact, let me take a second just to go through the marketplace just a little bit to give some texture to that 3,400 titles we have. So we have wire services, um, Associated Press, Reuters, DPA, which is a German wire service, and AFP, which is a French wire service. These um, providers give a really wide set, uh, a wide coverage, global reach. Um, they're really helpful, especially with uh, technology and with um, financial services. Then we have things that focus on technology, Fast Company, MIT Tech Review, CSO, CIO. I'm going to fly through this. Financial services are thrilled to see Bloomberg, Business Insider, New York Times, Forbes as part of our library. Um, these are organized based on the industries that we work most with. So we have healthcare, um, some good Cleveland Clinic, Mayo Clinic. We have great content from them. And then we also have telecom, um, IT Pro, Network World. <clears throat> Let me spend a second on these images at the bottom, though. So we have access to all of these images. Some of them are stock. Um, so we have stock coverage from Getty Images, Shutterstock, 2020, and Adobe. We also have what are called editorial images from Getty, Associated Press, Reuters. Um, and I think we might have some sh from Shutterstock too. The difference between those, stock is sort of generic imagery, like let me uh, see a beautiful sunset. Whereas editorial is more tied to the editorial calendar and the editorial coverage. So uh, stock might be show me a great sunset. Editorial is, says uh, there was a great sunset over Yankee Stadium uh, World Series uh, last night. Let me get that shot. We have access to both of those sets of images. So <laughs> I've talked a lot about the benefits of licensed content, that it's easy to get up on your site. It's cheaper to get up on your site. Um, it plays well uh, with a lot of different strategies. That Swiss Army Knife uh, uh, theme that I sort of keep banging over <laughs> our heads. Um, what's, what's the downside of licensed content? Is it performance? Well, this is across our network. We see that on average, licensed content exceeds original content for engagement rate and for time on page. Another data point from our network, this is actually from our own um, blog and social and email. Licensed content performs just as well, if not better, in generating click-throughs in newsletters and on social. So when people get on the site, they spend more time on the licensed piece um, than original. And click-throughs are just as high, if not higher, when you're trying to bring people back to the hub. So in short, you don't really sacrifice quality when you use licensed content. I talk about, so I talk about it a lot as a strategy and a tool for you to use. And I'm not, I'm saying that it, it works well with original content. You have to figure out how they work well together. It's not like licensed content will solve all the problems. You might find that licensed content helps some um, content pillars more than others. You might find that it's really good at awareness, top of funnel stuff, and you want your original content to focus on conversion at the bottom of the funnel. Um, that's to be figured out, but at the core of your marketing is a piece of content. And we have this great library that can, you can sort of outsource some of that too without sacrificing performance. The last thing I wanna spend some time on, so I think I have about 
five minutes before I want to make sure we get to Q&A, is this idea of testing with licensed content. Um, again, it's easy to use, fast to use, um, and performs well. So we recommend using it to test everything about your strategy. Test everything. Before you create an original piece, get licensed content on your site. Every new article you publish will give you data back. So the more licensed pieces you publish, the more data you get back. And before you dedicate resources and time to original content, test everything with licensed content. Test the tone of your writing, test the article length, test the imagery you use, test the headlines you use. Look at the data so that when you do put money and people to original content, you have a path ahead of you. We recommend that the article be about this long for this part of the funnel. We think the headline should look like this. This type of imagery works well. Another thing you can test are your actual content pillars. We had a customer about a year and a half ago come to us with three content pillars they wanted to focus on. Um, we use licensed content to scale up their hub and get it launched with a lot of content on it. And we almost immediately saw that one of the content pillars just had no engagement. It had no, uh, their, user, their, their, their visitors just really didn't click with it. So we swapped, we swapped content pillars until we found one that landed well. And then they put their original team to work. They tested basically what should we be talking about. Another thing to test is how frequently you should be sharing on social networks or how often you should be publishing a newsletter. That is really hard to do with original content. You can't just say, uh, let's go from one newsletter a month to one newsletter a week and see if that helps us with original content. There's big ramifications for that. The same thing with social. Like, we publish six uh, posts a day. Maybe we should publish 10 and see if that helps us or hurts us. Maybe we should publish 18 and see if that helps us or hurts us. So scaling that out and testing that is, um, is you can lean on licensed content for that. Lastly, uh, we hinted at this. I hinted at this previously, but check how wide the top of your funnel is. We will um, have customers come to us saying, I make screwdrivers, so I need to find someone who needs to buy a screwdriver. That's... That's the, the funnel. The top of it is somebody who wants a screwdriver. And what we can do with licensed content is test that and open that up and say, you know what? You can probably engage people who just like home improvement products, uh, projects, people who like to take care of their deck, people who like to uh, build things uh, for their kids. Um, and eventually they will need a screwdriver and they are subscribing to your newsletter and they're on your site learning things all day long. They will probably get your screwdriver. So this is something that would be hard to do with original content. Also because uh, like the examples I showed um, previously, when you're going sort of outside the funnel to test if things will land, like Twitter talking about project management um, or First Republic Bank talking about networking, to find an expert and to create that original content in an authoritative way only to that then be a test, um, that's not a good use of time. Uh, your team should be focusing on stuff that you know is going to be successful. So you can lean on licensed content to test that. Like what, what else can we bring to the conversation to engage our customers and our prospects? So let's quickly recap what we learned. Um, licensed content is an operational advantage that you can leverage. It's quick and easy to use and it doesn't sacrifice performance. It's dynamic. It can be applied to your content strategy like a Swiss army knife. I've never... <laughs> I don't want to say Swiss Army knife again for the rest of the day. I apologize. Um, that's been said a lot today. And use it to test everything about your program. And I hope that going through our actual customer sites inspire you to see how many ways it can be applied. Um, so that whatever your strategy, whether you want to look like a thought leader, you want to enable your sales team, you want to boost your organic traffic, you want to have a rich newsletter and audience building program, you want to do e-commerce, launch and hub a, a scale a hub, whatever your strategy and however you apply to it, you need product pages, you need newsletters, eBooks, you need a content marketing hub, social posts, licensed content can help your strategy by being part of the expression of that. <clears throat> so now it's time for questions. Um, my coworker, Ali is sitting next to me. Um, I'm gonna start with a question that we get all the time that we got in advance, which is about SEO. And this is the most common 
um, follow-up we get from our prospects and even our current customers that are using licensed content. Um, we have a good blog post about this, so it's in the resource page that you will get that will be emailed to you. Also, we've recorded this presentation, so we'll send you a link to that too. Um, SEO um, is obviously a huge, important channel. We think it's important. We have recommendations on um, how to use SEO to your advantage, how to write. In fact, our tool in our platform, as you're writing content, gives you real-time feedback about what you can do to your content to make it more SEO friendly. So we love SEO. It's a big part of, of the strategy. And the fear is that licensed content will hurt your SEO. And that used to be the case because Google would find, I mean, let's focus on Google. There are other search engines, but we'll just focus on Google. They'll find multiple copies of an article out there and be like, we don't know what this is. So we're going to penalize everybody for having this content that we can't really organize and see what's going on there. But then they develop canonical links and we're strict about use of canonical links so that the customer is basically publishing the article and saying, this is owned by Business Insider, we're using it legally. So there's no hurting your SEO. In fact, the licensed content you put on your site will help your SEO because the content, the authoritative good content from places like the New York Times helps build domain authority for your hub. So they'll say they're clearly talking about retirement. I know this is a Forbes article, but they're talking about retirement. This hub, the profile we're going to start building for this hub has retirement there and financial wellness. So the licensed content helps domain authority for your hub so that when you do publish original pieces, it gets a boost. You get to sort of stand on the shoulder of giants. So it doesn't hurt your SEO. In fact, it helps. That particular article won't show up in search because of the canonical link. But your hub is getting a profile that Google can, can, uh, can map to. And when people push back on SEO, again, we love SEO. I also remind them about the other channels that are important. We know how important our newsletter is to us at NewsCrit and how that, that, um, that outreach, that audience that reads it and comes back to us, how valuable that is. And something like a newsletter or social or um, sales enablement, that's very hard to keep flowing on original content alone. So yes, SEO is important. Licensed content, the way we do it will not hurt your SEO. It will help your hub's SEO. And let's think about the other channels too that need nurturing and not get sort of um, blinders on SEO. Um, we're not gonna hurt it. We're gonna make it better for your hub. But also let's talk about programming the rest of your, of your channels. So that's, that one always comes up. I think I saw on the, on the registration there was an SEO person on here. So um, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I hope uh, I answered your question. I'm sure that was the one you were looking to. So I see some more questions here. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to pick, uh, what are niche industries? Can you give an example of licensed content for a pool company? Um, that's interesting. What? Hmm. A pool cup. So we do have some good like outdoor, like to me, that's more like a lifestyle living home, home improvement type stuff. So what you can do and how you can take care of your house. Um, feel free to reach out to me or to sales at newscred.com. We can tell more specific what's in, uh, what's in your industry. Another question I see here is, would you recommend that your clients have a point of view, read the licensed content that they republished? Um, does that help to add that I'm a credible source, or is that not necessary? I love what Twitter does. I think, tw so this is, we're talking specifically about putting text in front of the article to sort of have a point of view. To me, that's a great opportunity that most of our customers don't take advantage of, and I think that they should. That's a chance for you to put your take on the news. So this is a great Forbes article. I just want to say that we agree with it. I think that that personalization of it really helps. Um, and we have a couple of customers that do it and do it well. Twitter, to me, um, they basically try to link out and have it be like a, a way to move the traffic around and make it stickier, which is one strategy. Um, I, I, I like it when our customers put more of a take on it, why we think this information is valuable and how does it maybe apply to us. So I, we have another question that was submitted in advance. Um, which is about what, what type of rights come with the content and how can the content be used. Um, if you're a content marketer, 
um, we have uh, what's called editorial use. Um, this means that the content needs to live as the publisher created it. So you can't do edits to it. You can't um, insert your branding. Um, you can't do derivative works. Um, and you have to use their canonical, maintain their byline um, and, and, their, and their attribution. Um, and it still performs as well as it does. Um, so we have an editorial use case. Uh, we have editorial rights that we can, um, we can use for you. If you're not in the content marketing team and you're more about creating websites, brochures, um, year-end uh, annual reports, whatever it is, um, we also can, we can secure a few commercial rights to the content, which is called the reprints business. Our team will go out, um, see how much it costs for you to get those rights, and, and then you can use in our platform the content right there. So we, um, we have a, a variety of, of rights. So basically, uh, we can get you um, what you need, basically. Um, another question that came in um, was, if you need our platform to access our marketplace content. Obviously, we encourage people to use our platform, um, not just because it helps your team work better, but also has good analytics in there, and it'll give you insight on how things are performing for you but it's not necessary. We do have some customers that have their own curation and authoring systems, and they basically just want to, um, they want access to the content. So we can talk, basically if you need, uh, if you think that this Swiss Army knife, oh, I said it again, and that this Swiss Army knife can help you, uh, reach out to me or our sales team and talk to us, and um, we'll let you know if there, uh, I'm sure there's opportunity there. I don't see any more questions um, being submitted, um, and I don't have any other ones. Um, but my information is here. You can reach out to me um, anytime. Um, and uh, I see David raised his hand, but I don't have any way to have you talk. So if you could submit the question. If not, um, thank you so much for coming. We put these things together not knowing if anybody's gonna attend, so it was really refreshing to have people on the other side of this. I hope it was helpful. Um, and uh, reach out to me with any feedback. Uh, I really appreciate it. We'll be on the line for a little bit in case any questions come in, um, but thank you so much.